In your botany work, um, can we hear your credentials? I have a bachelor's and a master's from WSU and a PhD in plant science from the University of Idaho. And I've been doing the plant identifications for the College of Agriculture at Washington State University since 1976, before you were born. <laughs> and I've heard that you can have a dried, squished specimen sent in and you would be able to identify it. Well, what's very interesting is when I first started doing the plant identifications in the 1970s, the process worked like this. The farmer would find a plant in his field that he didn't know what it was. So he'd throw it on the dashboard of his truck until he got back to the house. And then a couple days later when he was in town, he'd drop it off at the county extension agent's office. And the county extension agent wouldn't know what it is either, so he'd leave it on his desk for a while. After a while, he'd put it in a plastic bag and he'd put it in the mail and it would go through the U.S. mail and then it would go to campus and go through the campus mail. And then it would end up at the office and this, my secretary would call me. And by the time I got it, depending on how the plant had been packaged, it was either soup or dust. It was most plants I identified either by the smell or by looking at the hairs from the fragments of the leaves that were left. This was actually my training later on in forensic botany because the fragments I get out of dead people's hair are often much better than the early extension samples that I was <laughs> trained on. Most classic botanical taxonomists need the entire plant in good condition to identify it. That was not my training. Just by luck, I was forced to learn plants from incredibly inadequate specimens. And this has served me very well. Today, the process is completely different. Today, the farmer is standing in his field and he finds a weed that he doesn't know what it is. So he pulls out his cell phone, takes a picture of it, emails it to me. I'm sitting at my computer and I send him back the name of the plant. And I have a beautiful digital image with all the plant parts right in front of me. The process takes no time at all, and I have a better specimen than what I used to deal with. Wow. But that training in inadequate specimens served me very well in forensics. And tell me, how did you get involved with forensics? got involved with forensics because I taught continuing education courses on campus, and one of my students was Paul Katz, who was the chairman of the entomology department, who did a lot of work on forensic entomology and got me interested in the field. And I worked on a couple of cases with him and he spread my name around. And then I was at a Weed Science Society of America meeting in Orlando. And I met a fascinating gentleman by the name of David Hall, who was the premier forensic botanist in the United States. And he was a wonderful man who took me under his wing and he published a book on forensic botany and I'm a co-author. And I believe from my experience that there is forensic evidence that is missed in many, many cases because most law enforcement is not trained in forensic botany. They know a lot more about forensic anthropology and forensic entomology than they do about forensic botany. It's a, one of the newer fields. It's been incredibly insightful and educational talking to you today, Rich.